Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Today, I'm going to be reacting to salvation in Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. So, a big shout out to the person that suggested this, and a big shout out to people that consistently watch our channel thank you for watching liking commenting sharing subscribing you guys are the best i hope you guys are doing all right i may stay blessed so without wasting time let's get into the video We are humans, so rush to make mistakes. Then we regret it, and it may develop to a feeling of self-blame and determination to stop. Yet the individual does not take long till he feels tempted to make another mistake. He resists a lot. He resists Satan, and he resists himself, his desires and temptations. But at the end, Falls. What is the concept of salvation? The concept of salvation exists in the three religions. In short, it is how to reach the forgiveness of God and inner paradise. The eternal happiness is the final aim in all religions. The concept of salvation has preoccupied me my whole life. What is the path to the divine forgiveness and mercy? The path to God and to paradise? This confusion has to end. What is the concept of salvation in Judaism? In the Jewish religion, God set obligations for humans if they commit to them, they will live. So you shall keep my statutes and my judgments by which a man may live if he does them. I am the Lord. This obligation may include circumcision and preserving some days. Saturdays is sacred and the first days of month are sacred. For every sin, an offering has to be made to the Lord if it is made unintentionally. If he commits a sin intentionally, this soul shall be cut off from all his people. Who could save me from the sin? Who and how? The sins committed intentionally are unforgivable. The Torah says, If he touched the uncleanness of man, whatsoever uncleanness it be, that a man shall be defiled withal, and it be hid from him when he knoweth of it, then he shall be guilty. The offerings did not solve the problem of the sinful spirit. If the person submitting to the Torah makes a mistake, he should present the required offering. This way he would be purified from the outside only, so he would look pious or devoted in front of people from offering the sacrifice and accordingly sin will be forgiven. The books of the Torah did not include any hint or direct statement about doomsday, resurrection, or judgment. It only includes some hymens. So, the Torah pictures the Lord as a private possession for the Jews. It makes him kind of their servant, who is keen on their benefit and regretful of hurting them. But, what does Christianity say about salvation? Salvation, according to Christianity, is something that is very interesting. Why? Because you would imagine that Christianity would be taking its teachings back to Jesus, the son of Mary, Asa ben Maryam, peace be upon him. But the fact is that that is not correct. If you looked at the life of Jesus, Asa and Miriam, closely, you would see that he was from the same tribe as the Prophet Musa from Bani Israel, the tribe of Israel. And if you look at the teachings of Jesus himself in the Bible, that he said that I did not come with anything new. Christians believe in two of God's beautiful attributes, his mercy, and his justice. 
In order to fulfill the attribute of justice, they believe that Adam and his offspring must be punished for the original sin that their father did, which made him be dismissed from heaven. Adam and his offspring must be punished to fulfill this justice. But from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat from it you will surely die. Through crucifixion, justice would be served, and at the same time, the sins of the humans would be forgiven, which portray the mercy of God. Why do all the people inherit the sin of Adam? Where is the justice in this? Is there really a sin that children would inherit from their fathers descending from Adam? If yes, then it is strange that the Bible does not include a clear and direct statement about the point which cannot be interpreted any other way, because the whole Christian belief is based on such point. Why does the Lord feel such predicament? He is merciful and just, but He is also wise. He can forgive and pardon. Why such suffering had to happen for only one simple sin? Why would God send down half a God and half a human to be crucified even though he purified Mary without the need for all that? In addition, who got crucified? The divine part or the human part? After Isa ben Maryam, Jesus the son of Mary, left this world, that a man appeared by the name of Paul. He claimed when he was drunk, on the way to Damascus, he claimed that he fell asleep and had a vision for, that Jesus came to him and told him, what you need to do is to believe just that Jesus is God and he died for your sins on this earth. And that is the belief of Christianity today. But that is not the belief of Jesus. That is the belief of Paul. I am confused between the concept of the outer salvation to be purified and the concept of the inability to forgive the sin of Adam it took thousands of years to send a savior to earth who went through painful torment in order to forgive a simple sin. The Lord, I believe, in his infinite wisdom and mercy, I do not think he would do that, especially that the Bible says, fathers shall not be put to death for their children, nor shall the children be put to death for their fathers. A person shall be put to death for his own sin. So, where is, where, is where is the truth? Where is the truth? Repentance in Islam is a major concept. Uh, it gives every believer a hope to return to his righteousness, to gain forgiveness from his Creator. Because Islam as a religion acknowledges the fact that human nature is inclined into sinning and evil. As a person sins, he is recommended to repent and try to gain forgiveness from his Creator. That's why the Quran says, Verily Allah, the only God who is worthy of worship, loves those who frequently repent unto him and those who frequently purify themselves. Then there is no salvation in Islam. They call it repentance. So supposedly it can be done by anyone easily, anywhere and any time. For how many times can it be done? What is it exactly? This is the message of all the messengers of God, including Noah, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad, peace be upon them all, that there is no God worthy of being worshipped except one. On the other hand, Islam totally refuses the concept of original sin or that humans are born with sin. When someone sins, he is only responsible for the sin. Each person is only responsible for his deeds. No one carries or pays the sins of another. Accordingly, no human carries the sins of Adam and Eve. There is nothing in Islam that is called the original sin because every person in our religion is responsible for their own doings, whether good or bad. The Quran says, 
every person will be rewarded for what he has done of good and will be held accountable for what he or she has done of bad. As a matter of fact, our Prophet peace be upon him says that every child is born uh, on a pure nature, is born pure and sinless. And it is his parents who would either make him a Jew or Christian or a fire worshiper or whatever. But in fact, every person is born pure and according to monotheistic uh, belief. Uh, in another reference in the Quran, Allah the Almighty says that there is no bearer of a sin that will bear the sin of another. Every person is responsible for their own doing. And in Surah Al Zazala, Allah the Almighty says, Whosoever does an atom weight of good shall see it, and whosoever does an atom weight of evil shall see it. I testify that there is no God but Allah, and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. That was indeed an interesting um, video, but when it comes to salvation as well, what do we mean by that? I'm sure different religions take it in different ways or would define it in different ways. Otherwise, I was just thinking at the end of the video, good points are brought up as to why uh, babies should be punished for a sin that dates way back. It doesn't make sense because when babies are born, we're saying, this baby is not responsible for being born. We shouldn't punish it for its parents' mistakes. But then why should we think that God is actually going to punish that baby for something that happened way back? It doesn't make sense. I mean, we're humans are responsible for what we do. And we need to make that clear. Not just to our souls, but to the next generation as well. So that they're not as confused as many people are or we are otherwise without um dealing with that confusion will forever maybe follow wrong paths in life because we don't want to accept that that is wrong we don't want to accept that you know what this is just not it for me otherwise let me know what you guys actually think about salvation in these three different religions otherwise make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video